RNA-seq data are used to study which genes in an organism are expressed under different conditions. RNA-seq data also provide an estimate of relative gene expression levels within a single sample. However, when RNA-seq data are initially obtained, the data are simply a collection of sequence information with no genomic context. We do not know which genes are expressed and at what levels. In this video, we will discuss the computational approaches that enable RNA-seq data to be efficiently mapped to an organism's genome assembly. In order to produce RNA-seq data, we need to first obtain and sequence the RNA from the organism we are studying. RNA can be extracted from an organism at specific developmental stages, from specific tissues, or after different treatments. The extracted RNAs undergo library preparation and are most often sequenced using the Illumina sequencing technology. We call the sequence data obtained from sequencing a fragment of RNA a read. In general, reads produced by the Illumina sequencers are between 75 and 150 bases long. The resulting RNA-seq data allow us to identify genes that are expressed and to identify genes that show changes in expression levels under different conditions. After the sequence data have been obtained, we need to map the RNA-seq reads to the genome so that we can determine the genes that are being expressed. This is a difficult computational problem. The sizes of the genome assembly for eukaryotes can range from tens of millions to tens of billions of bases, and the Illumina sequencer can produce hundreds of millions of RNA-seq reads. In addition, because of sequencing errors and polymorphisms, we need to allow for a small number of differences between the RNA-seq reads and the genome assembly. If we were to use an algorithm like BLAST to perform this search, the process would be extremely slow. Because the amount of time required to search each RNA-seq read would be proportional to the length of the database. Hence, we must use an alternative approach that reduces the amount of time required to search for sequence similarity between each RNA read and the genome assembly. This alternative approach takes advantage of a data structure in computer science known as a suffix tree. The suffix tree creates an index of the genome assembly, thereby allowing us to quickly find the locations where the RNA-seq read matches the genome assembly. We will use a simple example to illustrate how to construct a suffix tree. Our database consists of a sequence of DNA with 10 nucleotides. We will first specify the position of each base in the sequence starting from position 0. The dollar sign at position 10 denotes the end of the sequence. To help us construct a suffix tree, we will first create a suffix array. Each element in the suffix array corresponds to a position in the DNA sequence and its corresponding suffix. For example, at position 10, the suffix is the dollar sign. At position 9, the suffix is an A followed by the dollar sign. The suffix GA dollar sign is at position 8, the suffix AGA dollar sign is at position 7, and so on. We can continue to build this list backwards until we reach position 0, where the suffix is the entire DNA sequence in the database. We then sort these suffixes alphabetically, while also keeping track of the position of each suffix. We can convert a suffix array into a suffix tree by merging the common suffixes in the list of sorted suffixes. We will examine each column of the suffix array and create a separate branch for each unique nucleotide. For example, in the first column of the suffix array, we have the nucleotides A, C, and G. Hence, we will create three branches in the first level of the tree. For the subset of suffixes that begin with an A, the second column consists of the dollar sign C and G. This means we will create three branches at the second level of the tree. When we reach the dollar sign, we will record the position in the leaf of the tree. In this case, we will record the position 9 for the suffix A dollar sign. We can repeat this process to construct the rest of the subtree for the suffixes that begin with an A. Similarly, we can repeat this process to construct the subtrees for the suffixes that begin with a C or a G. After we have created the suffix tree, it now becomes much easier to find all the matches to a read in the database. 
For example, if we want to find the sequence CAG in our database, we simply follow the branches of the tree until we match the entire read and report the positions in the leaves, in this case, positions 1 and 6. The amount of time required to find all matches to a read is proportional to the logarithm of the length of the read and does not depend on the size of the database. We can modify the search algorithm to allow inexact matches. To allow base substitutions, we can follow multiple paths but charge a penalty for each mismatch. We can terminate the search within a subtree once the number of mismatches exceeds the maximum number of differences allowed. To facilitate inexact matches with insertions and deletions, we can use dynamic programming or a heuristic search to compute the edit distance of the read against many paths in the suffix tree.